So next lecture on this segment for CS452 is basically Bluetooth and uh, I am going to talk about Bluetooth. So let's start. Bluetooth basically is a wireless technology, wireless LAN technology. It is a data link layer technology which actually talks about a small connectivity. It's called ad hoc network. So Bluetooth will cre create a ad hoc network, ad hoc LAN. Now basically we can have two types of network. One is PicoNet, one is ScatterNet. So the main topics to be discussed in this particular section will be architecture of Bluetooth, Bluetooth layer, baseband layer, L2 cap. So what Bluetooth is basically, Bluetooth has several applications. We can create Bluetooth LAN. It's a architecture for designing a small scale network which is called personal area network. So basically if you look into Bluetooth project, the king of Denmark, Harald Blattend, actually is the name behind this particular technology Bluetooth. So Bluetooth was a SIG, uh, social innovative group of uh, different companies started this project and When uh, Harold Blattend name was referred, so this Blattend was actually translated to in English as Bluetooth. So it started by originally started by a company which is Ericsson Ericsson company. Now small uh, devices like mobile phone, PDA, notebook, computer, other peripherals use this particular uh, technology that is called Bluetooth. It operates with a bandwidth of uh, with a band of 2.45 gigahertz, and this is having the license of Bluetooth. It usually works in that particular area of 10 meter, so it creates a personal personal area network which is having 10 meters of area. Uh, still, that you can see that Bluetooth used in different devices in car audio, Bluetooth audio, and all. all not many devices are there. We have version 2 which provides the speed up to 2.1 Mbps. Now this is a basic of Bluetooth which we have already talked about this creation of Bluetooth architecture. Um, so it, it got some development standard and this SIG was initially created by Ericsson, IBM, Intel, Nokia and Toshiba. In the year 1999, Bluetooth was started and then IEEE gave a standard notification and it has IEEE 802.15 uh, notification and this comes under IEEE 802.15. So Bluetooth is basically a LAN standard which talks about PAN personal area network. Now, now Bluetooth has its special Bluetooth special uh, interest group, so Bluetooth SIG, who define all those profiles and other things. Now, when we talk about Bluetooth architecture, we have already mentioned. We talk about PicoNet and ScatterNet. If you uh, if you look into the architecture, when we uh, talk about uh, Bluetooth in details, it has Bluetooth PicoNet and ScatterNet. For example, if we are creating a small uh, network with devices. This is a master. This is called slave. Now, when you have such master slave connection, this is called PicoNet. So, this is called PicoNet. So, when we talk about this, we will be talking about this in later. Now, Bluetooth PicoNet has up to seven slave devices connected and remaining devices so bluetooth in an architecture can have up to 255 devices but slave has two modes one is called park mode one is called active mode so basically there are two modes so only master and active slave can, can communicate with each other so it's a 
when it is parked it will be very uh, low power state otherwise bluetooth is always a low power uh, connectivity so when we talk about bluetooth architecture we have something called small radio cell which is called piconet which is about 110 meters and if we actually bridge together or club together with multiple piconets then we can have called scatternet so scatternet is basically if we talk about piconet so for example this is a piconet this is a piconet this is a piconet so when we when this different different piconets are connected with each other this becomes scatternet now we'll show you show it to you later now this is all about now master will involve into parking of uh, all inactive and active uh, bluetooth devices so you can see this is a bluetooth network this is a bluetooth piconet so these are different slips so when in this topology in this uh, pan topology these slips are directly connected to this particular master and remaining are in park state now if this device can is trying to get connected since this is not these are uh, not uh, uh, this master is not being occupied by all seven uh, bluetooth slaves so still this will this can actually create a connection with this particular master so what it has to do this particular slave ha slave has to send a request to a master and then there can be pairing and other things can be done so in bluetooth architecture master does all the uh, control and slave can also only be connected with that so th there is a chip which are incorporated in different different devices and then this gets bluetooth, bluetooth connectivity so there are either master slave or slave master connectivity there is no slave to slave connectivity and this uses time division multiplexing for uh, connections in between different devices so we can see there are, in bluetooth architecture there are three classes of radios which is ha having uh, means depending on chip chip there are class 1 class 2 and class 3 radios and depending on that it has the range so class 1 radio is a better which is having 300 feet or 100 meter of range uh, we uh, normally have seen there are uh, devices or we normally can see class 2 radio devices which is of uh, 10 meter or 30 feet but class c uh, class 3 radio is uh, also available which is of 1 meter or 3 feet which is available now bluetooth architecture when we talk about bluetooth ar architecture we have already uh, you know talked about uh, this we have already uh, mentioned that bluetooth uses a 2.4 gigahertz ism band and it uses fhss yesterday or in previous uh, class we have already discussed what is fhss so this is the specification and in such cases 79 channels with 1 megahertz each can be connected with the fsk modulations now this is all about a bluetooth architecture if you look into this architecture so what happens this particular slave is connected to master this particular master is connected to another slave so for example this is piconet 1 p1 and this slave also can be connected to a another master and this slave is called bridge this is actually doing a bridging in between uh, two piconets so if you look into such architecture this is p1 and this is p2 so this actually creates a connection in scatternet and this is actually creating a connection in scatternet so let's go back to the slide and see now in this case this particular slave is creating connection with this master and this master so this is called bridge slave and this creates so such small small piconets can be connected and give a scatter net so so piconet can have uh, up to eight uh, stations so beyond that such small piconets can be connected and uh, can create a scatter net in that case uh, this master can talk to this particular master with this particular slave where this called a bridge slave so what is piconet piconet it can 
have a small network which is having having eight station. Uh, eight station means if you look into this, uh, there are stations which are parked. There are stations which are active. So there can be have eight active station out of which one station is always primary and rest are secondary. Now communications in PicoNet can be one to one, one to many. So any addition to this uh, eight secondaries are actually in park state. So this park state also have uh, different architecture for different syn synchronization. So this is a basically architecture of PicoNet. So now we have already discussed about scatternet. Now scatternet, what happens? Small small PicoNets can be connected to okay different different. Uh, uh, small, small small piconets can be connected to uh, can be connected with each other using that bridging uh, slave. Now a station in such cases can be member of two piconets, and this formation of small small piconets when gathered together, then there is a formation of scatternet. Now this you can see this this can be primary and secondary for uh, different different uh, uh, networks. So this can be primary. Okay for this and this can be secondary for this depending on that okay we can have different network structures now this is about different different topologies now how bluetooth works so if you look into bluetooth so bluetooth also this is physical layer we, we know this is data link layer so when we look into such layer this is data link layer so we have a mac layer so bluetooth this Bluetooth works here. So we, we need to know the architecture behind this. So let's discuss in details. Okay. This is the application. So in between we have these three layers, radio layer, baseband layer, and we'll discuss about L2 cap. So this has different different uh, features. This each and every layer has different different features. Now if you look into the Bluetooth protocol stack. So protocol stack has first radio layer. So now what is radio layer? Radio layer discuss about the band. So let's uh, first talk about the radio layer. Now when we talk about radio layer, we have something called band. So the operating band, we already know that it works on 2.4 gigahertz ISM band. So this band is divided into 79 channels of 1 megahertz each. So this radio channel is helping physical layer to give a connectivity. Now if we have 79 channel of 1 megahertz each, so this 2.4 gigahertz ISM, the entire band will be divided into different different okay other bands. So we will discuss this okay other layers now. This is basically what we talked about uh, radio layer. So this is basically comes under the physical layer part of Bluetooth. So after that, next is called baseband layer. So now when we talk about band, here comes the bandwidth uh, that we have already discussed. That is 2.4 gigahertz ISM band. Now which frequency it uses? It uses FHSS. If you cannot remember, let me write it down. Frequency hopping, the full form of this is frequency hopping spread spectrum. So this is the full form of this. Now, now Bluetooth has hopping of 1600 times of hop per second. Okay, so this is 1600 per second. This is the hop count of Bluetooth. Now, which means there is a frequency of 1600 times per second. So, if you calculate this, let's un understand this in details. If you calculate this now, so we can get the frequency. If we calculate frequency, frequency is 1 by t. Now, time period is 1600. So, 1 by 1600 sorry uh, let's erase one more zero so if you calculate
1 by 1600 so we have already seen there is a calculation that uh, in a second it can have 1600 times of uh, uh, times of hop so this will 1 by 1600 second uh, this will come to 625 microsecond if you calculate by calculator this will come so the time we can calculate so sorry uh, I, I just uh, wrote something wrong this is we, we got the frequency so this is time period so the formula what we wrote is little incorrect so in this case we actually are calculating time period t equal to 1 by f so t equal to 1 by f or f equal to 1 by t is ok so we have we have we, we know the frequency that is 1600 uh, times per, uh, per second so if you calculate the time period now we, we got the time period that is 625 mi, uh, microsecond so this is the time period of this particular ok frequency so we we we, we, we can calculate the other factors if we uh, have some calculations which we will discuss later we can calculate different different things things so in baseband baseband layer it, we, we have the different access method so the link manager will decide upon the access method so here in this case it uses the access access method which is called TDMA time division multiplexing access uh, so TDMA is time division multiplex access so it has two types of communication so these two communications are single secondary communication and multiple secondary communication which we will discuss later. Now here in this case the physical link has two types of okay links one is called uh, that within primary and secondary in link manager will decide what type of links can be there in uh, data link layer. These two types of links are called SCO link and SCL link. SCO link is basically synchronous connection oriented link whereas ACL is asynchronous current connection oriented link then we will discuss about L2 cap and other other things so HCI plays a huge role that is called host controller interface in such cases now so Bluetooth radio layer we, we have already discussed so uh, let uh, let me give you a brief the radio layer moves from uh, moves the bit from master to slave and slave to master there is no slave to slave, slave communication so there is a 10 meter of operating normally um, in, in Bluetooth radio layer and it has 2.4 gigahertz of ISM bandwidth the band is divided into 79 channel of 1 megahertz each and we have seen the hops are calculated 623 to 625 microsecond okay that we have already calculated so it uses 802.11 architecture uh, but normally it comes under Bluetooth comes under 802.15 and this these are the Bluetooth uh, radio layer specification. Now next is bed, uh, baseband layer. The next layer we have seen is baseband layer. Already we have discussed. So this uses TDMA for communication and okay. And each frame is transmitted over a long uh, over a logical channel is called link and there is a link management which happens to be there with uh, uh, if you look into this link manager so this link manager decide upon two different different links uh, one is called SCO link one is called SCL link that we will discuss ok now this uh, SCL link what it is SCL link is called asynchronous connectionless link so what if this, this link is basically this is ok this SCL link is used when data integrity is more important and we, we need to avoid some latency. In this type of link if a paste payload, payload uh, encapsulated then the frame is okay found to be corrupted. So this need to be retransmitted. So it uses packet switch network and data available in at very irregular travel uh, okay intervals and uh, this traffic is basically a best effort basis traffic is an ACL frame uses an odd number slot and ok and if we have more number of slot it can achieve a maximum uh, data rate up to 721 kbps and because of the frame format if I if I show you the calculation you can understand it better 
so let's go back to calculation part so for example uh, uh, i am giving a frame which is transmitting okay can be either one slot communication sorry either one slot communication or three slot communication or five slot communication like many communications can be there so let's take an example a slot uh, per slot it is always uh, 625 so one slot time frame is 625 microsecond now what happens that we have to find out the effective uh, communication because for example it is using a bluetooth is using this is for example master this is for example slave this is using for example three slots slot 1 slot 2 slot 3 now there is a frame exchange time so we can calculate the effective time for example a slot is getting total of 625 microsecond so in from uh, link management we have to first calculate how much is basically in needed for hopping and control management so if hopping and control management takes a time of for example for example taking a time of 2 59 microsecond so effective sorry effective time in such case will be so if we calculate effective time in such case will be 625 minus 259 which is uh, somewhere in between uh, uh, exactly it will be 366 so in such cases in 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 this particular fashion we can calculate other things also for example if we talk about three slot which we have shown you in the picture if you if you calculate it for three slot for example we are calculating for three slot which we have shown slot 1 2 3 now what happens we have seen per slot calculation so it will be 3 into 625 minus 259 but we have calculated it will come under 1616 mus now in 1 mus if i can transfer 1 bit so total i can transfer 1616 bit so this much bit of communication can be there so like that we can calculate um, different different uh, frames and frame formats and other things now let's come back to the slide again now we have second uh, types of communication which is called aco that uh, sco that is synchronous connection oriented so basically asynchronous means uh, okay there can be a simultaneous process but synchronous means it is okay one after another so it utilize the entire channel channel so aco is used when uh, avoiding latency and it it is more important that there should to be error free free delivery so it aco is used for real time audio so it it can create okay different different link for different different channel but one channel is not divided into different different slots so this is slot wise this is one single channel this type of channel using a fixed slot for in unidirection way for communication so now next and the most important of uh, bluetooth is basically is called l2 cap so l2 cap is basically the full form of l2 cap is called logical link control and adaptation protocol the full form of this we will talk about this logical link control and adaptation protocol
Now, normally what happens in data link layer, uh, we got two sub layer. One is called Mac and one is called LLC. So basically the task which is being performed by this layer that is L2 cap, the full form of this is L2 cap is basically job of LLC. So L2 means logical link. So it's full form of this is logical link control and adaptation protocol. Now it is used for data ex exchange for uh, normally on ACN link. Uh, and uh, uh, so ACL uses uh, this uh, LLC, whereas SCO doesn't use this LLC. So SCO doesn't use, so basically is it's for asynchronous. When uh, we uh, require a synchronous communication, we does not require any support from LLC. So what happens? 16 bit length field uh, which defines different different uh, okay uh, we, 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 let's come back to uh, let, let's come back and find out. So this is basically uh, 16 bit length of uh, L2 cap uh, uh, which has a length of 2 byte. So this basically defines okay the length of the data then uh, after that we have channel ID which defines a unique identifier of, of, of different channels, virtual channels and L2 cap has some specific duties of multiplexing, segmentation, reassembly, QAS and group management and it do data and control both. It has multiplexing, segmentation, reassembly, QAS and group management which you all have studied in the previous semester. So this what? This basically is done by Bluetooth L2 cap layer. Now, now coming back to these two things which is there by uh, Bluetooth baseband layer. Baseband layer is basically handle two things that is single uh, secondary communication and uh, multiple secondary communication. This is a picture but we have already discussed now. Now coming to the frame format of Bluetooth, let's dis discuss the frame format of Bluetooth. So if you talk about frame format of Bluetooth, this is the frame format. It got mm, the frame header. This frame header contains, okay, 54 bit field, which is a repeated 18 bit pattern. So this has the specification. So header has address type, then FAS, then HEC, and after that there is a data. So basically it Frame format, there are three things. One is called access port, then header and data. So if you uh, look into look into this, there are three parts. If you look into the header part, header part has first address, which is three bit address. What this address do? This three bit address of will define Okay. Now, since this is uh, three bit, it has the values zero to seven. I will take one to seven because zero means uh, th this 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 is used for broadcast communication. Otherwise, it will define one to seven channel or all different secondary channel. Now, type we know that is a type definition always type of the packet. This is again four bit field. This defines now f. F is basically to identify flow control, A is to identify the acknowledgement, S is the sequence number. This FAS is very much important. So this is one bit, one bit. So this FAS is basically flow control, acknowledgement and sequence number and HEC is basically doing the header error correction. So this is basically a huge format and this is uh, uh, of Bluetooth which basically controls everything. Now we have already discussed L2 cap. Uh, we have already uh, now discussed Bluetooth frame structure and let's come to the Bluetooth applications. Now when we talk about Bluetooth applications, these are the different types of applications. Um, we have seen car audio, Bluetooth um, different different devices, communications, you can file, transfer file, audio, video, everything with Bluetooth. But it's a, a low personal area network. So, so that's end of uh, lecture of uh, today 
all about Bluetooth. So in uh, in a nutshell, what we have discussed in Bluetooth is basically what Bluetooth is, what is architecture of Bluetooth, what are the different applications of Bluetooth, and all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for listening the lecture.